One thing I want to ask about is the relationship between Core Boot and then these like community images that exist. So things like uh, a Libre Boot, Desharo, things like that. Like, how does how does that relationship sort of, I guess, play out? Right. So you have like, um, excuse me, mm, you have like um, quote unquote Core Boot distributions like. The shadow, like, um, sorry, like, um, Mr. Chromebox, like, uh, like the shadow, Mr. Chromebox, uh, Liberboot, so on. Mm -hmm. And basically, how that works is that, um, because Coreboot is GPL2, mm -hmm. they have their own forks focusing on, like, uh, the shadow is focusing on, like, uh, user friendliness, uh, Liberboot is focusing on, uh getting rid of the, all the you know binary blobs like um i think recently they started doing stuff with haswell uh, and such um, basically what they're doing in their projects uh i've seen like liaro and or or Michał um hanging out in the spaces like irc and basically they just say okay we've we've done that in the project do you guys want to upstream or they just push it upstream and let us um, review the code mm -hmm. so you know they basically contribute code uh sometimes they do it um, i would say better than other times but generally they do contribute the code back mm -hmm. which is great to see so you mentioned it's like a, a distribution of Corbett. Like, obviously, the term distribution is commonly used in the context of a uh, Linux distro, but what do you mean by a distribution in this context? Yeah, so those projects basically take like Corbett 3. Uh, they mm, like drop their patches on top of, uh, like if, they, if it's not in the upstream, like for instance, uh, I think two years ago, Coreboot dropped support for AMD uh, 14, 15, x16 uh, generation of CPUs, mm -hmm. which is like FM2 or AM3, uh, basically like a decade old stuff. There wasn't good, a good reason for this, just no one wanted to move them forward to the new resource allocator, mm -hmm. but no one worked on it, so it's been dropped. But uh, in some of the forks that you might have, they still maintain support for those platforms because mm -hmm. they have user base and they just care more about those platforms. Right. Then you have like uh, focusing on user experience, like you have uh, heads, which is uh, focusing on security. Uh, you have Liberboot, which is uh, CBIOS plus uh, Grub, I believe. Uh, which is basically um, getting rid of all the binary blobs. Then you have Dasharo uh, from 3MDEP, which is um, focusing on user friendliness. So you can, uh, when you buy like Nova custom laptop or something, you can go to EDK2 and change like if you want to uh, enable like resizable bar support and that kind of stuff, like you would on the AMI firmware. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've mentioned a lot that Core Boot is kind of, I guess, unapproachable for some for, for a lot of people because you know lack of documentation, all of this stuff. But if you are someone who is a non-technical user, maybe you didn't install Core Boot yourself, but you buy a laptop that has been core booted, whether it's System76 or anyone else that might provide them. Is there any reason why like a non-technical user would care about core boot? Or is it really something that only, you know, people who want to get into the weeds of stuff actually are going to even think about? Yeah, so I would say it's mostly uh, how much you care about uh, security and, uh, you know, if, and how much you trust the firmware that your uh, system came with. Like, a lot of people don't care 
But then again, a lot of people just buy a Windows laptop from the store and that's what they use. Right. And, you know, that's up to them. But if you're like a technical person, uh, let's say, you know, if you are running Linux, in, then I would say there are plenty of reasons. Like, for instance, on the shelf, I have the MSI mainboard that 3 m ported Corbut to. Mm. And when you boot the... Um, when you boot uh, Linux on it, you it spews a lot of ACPI errors. Uh, mostly works, but sometimes it's buggy. Uh, and if you check like kernel source uh, for Linux, you see that uh, ACPI.c has a lot of quirks like on this system, disable this interrupt controller because, uh, or like uh, sometimes you put the system and you get uh, IRQ9, nobody cared or something like that. <laughs> So a lot of vendors simply don't uh, test their firmware that um, well, I would right. say. Like, they care about Windows and that's it. Mm -hmm. But if it works with Linux, then that's basically up for Linux community to, to take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. So for instance, uh, Every vendor has their own like embedded control firmware, like Lenovo uh, framework. Well, framework is using Chrome, Chrome OS embedded controller, but uh, like Lenovo, like Asus WMI Windows Management Interface, all of that has like ACPI specific works to control stuff like fan speed. Um, but back like this mostly don't standard, but like fan speed, like custom features. Like uh, one of my friends has. Um, Asus Zephyrus with like a LED display on the lid. So that's all done by SPI, right? By mm -hmm. SPI calls, you set the, um, basically you set, you set the commands, let's say. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, it gets uh, a lot of reverse engineering, even with like Windows drivers and so on to get it working. Mm -hmm. So if you buy a laptop with core boot and you use Linux, it's basically guaranteed that it will work because uh, people who develop core boot are uh, pretty much always using Linux. Mm -hmm. So basically it's putting, uh, well, let's say UFI that is being done by vendors like AMI and then put on main boards like MSI. That's mostly targeted towards like Windows. It's best tested on Windows and, you know, mm -hmm. and with core boot, if you buy um, a main board with core boot, or laptop with core boot, or if you install core boot yourself, then it's pretty much guaranteed that it will work as it should with Linux without you know, any quirks with uh, like fan speed and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, any quirks, unless we're talking Chromebooks, which are just weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at this point, it mostly works. Uh, we don't have we don't have HW Mon driver, but you can control the fan using EC2, and you can uh, you know temperature monitoring works. Like automatic fan control should work over uh, DPT DPTF, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you have an AMD system, then um, it should be done via embedded controller. But it's mostly working just fine. <laughs> Like, the very nice thing about Chromebooks is the audio. Mm -hmm. mm, like, the laptop that I have in front of me, it, it is a brand new machine that did cost like 1500 euro. And the audio in it, on it is so terrible, I literally cannot listen to the speakers. And if you connect the headphones, it's not even better. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but then you grab uh, like uh, Eldry that I, ha that I have here and the speakers sound pretty good. Like mm -hmm. I could even make it better because um, we can still throw uh, DSP tuning in user space. Mm -hmm. But because we have uh, DSP on those systems, then the speakers sound a lot better than they do on most x86 laptops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 